Hey y'all, it's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do my January PBR, or I'll call it possibility reads, because I'm more of a mood reader, but I do have some of these that I will, I know I will be reading, and then some that I do have set out, but it could change. So we'll start out with the books that were sent to me to read, that I have next to read coming up. And I'm not gonna read synopsis for these because I read them recently in a book haul. First is uh, Seven Series Book One, which is Greed by John T. Spangler. And the author sent this to me. Very excited to get to that. And then Hayden and the Night Series, The Magic Hollow, Stephen Clark. The author sent that to me, I'm very excited. And the Dragon and the Girl, True North by Laura Finley Evans. The author sent me this and I'm very excited. It sounds so good. And then this comes out in April and it's Trusting True North by Gina Linko and the publisher sent me this. It sounds really good so I'm very excited. And the author Betty Fudge sent me this, Norm and Ginger Enter the Hidden, book one. So excited. And the publisher of this one was Shadow Mountain, the one that sent me this. And then HarperCollins sent me The Unforgettable Logan Foster by Sean Peters. I'm very excited. This comes out January 18th. So I'll be reading this one very soon. And these I know I'll be reading because I've already started them. <laughs> this is one that the author sent to me. Trail of the Cursed Cobras by Barry Nugent. And I read this one in a haul recently. The synopsis, I read the synopsis of this one in a haul recently. Loving it so far. I'm on page 67. And I just started this one. The Bookshop of Dust and Dreams by Mindy Thompson. I'm only on page 20. It's 1944 Sutton, New York. And Poppy's family owns and runs Rhyme and Reason, a magical bookshop that caters to people from all over different places and time periods. Though her world is ravaged by World War II, customers hail from the past and future, infusing the shop with a delightful mix of ideas and experiences. Poppy dreams of someday becoming a shopkeeper like her father, though her older brother Al is technically next in line for the job. She knows all of the rules handed down from one generation of shopkeeper to the next, especially their most important one. They must never use the magic for themselves. But then Al's best friend is killed in the war, and her brother wants to use the magic of the shop to save him. With her father in the hospital, suffering from a mysterious illness, the only one standing between Al and the bookstore is Poppy. Caught between her love for her brother and loyalty to her family, she knows her brother's actions could have devastating consequences that reach far beyond the bookshop as an insidious, growing darkness looms. This decision is bigger than Poppy ever dreamed, and the fate of the bookshop hangs in the balance. I'm not far in, and I already love this bookshop. <laughs> and everything about it is already so creative and unique, so that involves the bookshop that I've read so far. So I'm very excited to continue. And then I always try to, I've started where I, a sequel in a series that I'm into that I want to continue. I started reading a little bit each night so I can catch up on all my series too. And now I'm on The Beast and the Bethany, Revenge of the Beast by Jack Medjit Phillips, I think that's it. This is book two. So I'm not going to read the synopsis. So far it's just as funny and hilarious. Bethany is actually annoying me a little more in this one to start with, so hopefully she'll quit that. <laughs> just kidding. But still so funny and loving it so far. Can't wait to see what happens next. And I've been reading this one a little bit slower because I've just been reading one short story a day or I might miss a day or just enjoying it. And it's the Very Merry Murder Club. And it's just a bunch of short stories from a bunch of different authors. I'm on page 103. So far, each story I've read, I've really enjoyed. Just very atmospheric and lots of mystery. And I'm really loving it. And I was doing that because like the sequel I'd added on to my nightly reads, I was doing Christmas ones. And this isn't really Christmassy. It's more like wintertime mystery, I would say, so far. So that's why. I have that one added to these. And then I also started trying to read in a little bit of a graphic novel as I can. And I haven't started this one yet, but it's next in line. The Sleepover by Michael Regina. It's just beautiful. And the Rizzo family returns home from vacation to discover their nanny Ruby has unexpectedly passed away. Matthew takes the news the hardest. After weeks of reeling, his three best friends decide to cheer him up with a night of junk food, prank calls, and scary movies. 
but their plans for an epic sleepover are jeopardized when Matt's single mother, unable to take any more time off of work, is forced to hire a new nanny on the spot to watch over Matt and his younger sister Judy. Miss Swan, however, is all too happy to have the boys over. She actually seems like the perfect babysitter, letting the kids eat whatever they want and mostly leaving them alone. But there's something about her Matt doesn't trust. He even begins to fear she could be the witch from local legend. Is he just having a hard time dealing with Ruby's passing or are Matt and his horror buff friends in for the fright of their lives as they come face to face with a real monster? Very excited. And a few more sequels I want to get to after I like finish The Beast and the Bethany are Girl Giant and the Jade War by Van Hong. Sorry for that wrong. This is the second book. I won't read the synopsis, but the first book was amazing. I absolutely love The Monkey King, which he was featured in the first book. I'm so excited to see what happens next, and there's illustrations throughout. I just was in love with the first book, so I cannot wait to continue. And then The Astonishing Chronicles of Oscar from Elsewhere. This is the Kingdoms and Empire series by Jacqueline Moriarty. The first book was The Inconvenient, Extremely Inconvenient, Adventures of Bronte Metalstone, I think. This is a naked hardback. And this is like way in the series now, so I won't read the synopsis, but beautiful illustrations. I love this series so much. It's an all-time one of my all-time favorites, so cannot wait to continue. Another favorite series of all time, one of my favorite series of all time, is the Myrtle Hardcastle Mystery Series. This is the third book now, I think. I won't read the synopsis, but this is Cold Blooded Myrtle. These are by Elizabeth C. Bunce. And Brett Hellquest, one of my favorite illustrators, does the cover. And these are just like historical fiction, detective style mystery, and I just love I just love all of that type of I just love that type of story and writing and I love Myrtle and I can't wait to see what happens next. And then a series I have, I should have put it in longer series, I want to read video, but it's in my bedroom on that shelf, so I totally forgot about that shelf when I did the video, <laughs> but I had been putting it off and putting it off because I had read that if you haven't read classics, classics it'll spoil them, like I had read, I couldn't remember if it was A Little Princess or A Secret Garden, so I read both of them, and then I read Oliver Twist, and then I saw the newest one had Wizard of Oz, and so I would posted something in the author actually um, responded and said that it it doesn't spoil them. If it did spoil them, it would be, no, I can't remember again. I think it was a secret card, but it might've been a little princess. See, I keep, I can't remember, which is why I read them both. <laughs> and she said, if it would, it, it would possibly be those. And I was like, well, I read that one, so great. So I can read them now. So that series is the Pages and Co series. And the first book, Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James. And I have all the books that are currently out. So far, so I'm very excited to finally start this now that I know that I can. I thought I had to read all these classics first, but I'm glad I read the ones I've read because I love them. And I'm excited to see how um, they tie in. Welcome to Pages & Co. Since her mother's disappearance, Tilly has found comfort in stories at Pages & Co, her grandparents' bookshop. But when her favorite characters, Anne of Green Gables and Alice from Wonderland, appear in the shop, Tilly's adventures become very real. Not only can she follow Anne and Alice into their thrilling world, she discovers she can book wander into any story she chooses. Tilly's new ability could even help her solve the mystery of what happened to her mother all those years ago. The danger may be lurking on the very next page. That just sounds incredible. Traveling in the stories with some of her favorite characters like Alice and Anne, which I still need to read Anne, just sounds so good. And this is another series that has such a loyal and big following especially on Instagram that I've seen and this is another one I don't think that I've ever heard anybody not like everybody just loves it so much so I'm very excited to start this finally now that I know I can <laughs> and then one I've had forever that I want to get to because I've been trying to get through all of Sarah Beth Durst um, books ever since I read The Girl Who Could Not Dream I think it was and I loved that so much and then I read Stone Girl's story loved it and, oh yeah, and I think I have all of her books now and all the rest I still have to read. And I wanna read this one. And then I have another one that's an older one that I wanted to read before I read her new one, but I might just read this one and then read her new one because I wanna read it so bad. But this is Catalyst by Sarah Beth Durst. 
Yeah, I have two more of hers. I still need to read it. It was the girl who could not drain that made me fall in love with her. Then I read the Stone Girl story. I still have to read Spark, this one, and Journey Across Hidden Islands. And I have both of those, so. This is such a beautiful cover, and there's a huge cat. I mean, so he named the kitten Pipsqueak because she was so tiny and promised to always take care of her. Then the kitten grew and grew. Now she's bigger than a horse and talking as well. Fleeing into the woods to escape the curious eyes of the internet, Zoe and her best friend Harrison must keep the giant cat hidden as they desperately search for a way to return her to normal size. If they don't succeed, Pipsqueak may never be safe again. But why did she grow so large in the first place? And what if trying to change her back leads to even greater danger? It sounds like a magical read with a huge talking cat named Pipsqueak, which I love, with some important messages. So, very excited. This is another one where I have, I haven't read from this author yet, but I have her newest book, but I've had her older, her other book for a long time, so I want to read it first before I go into her newest. And this is Rise of the Dragon Moon by Gab Gabrielle K. Fern. Princess Talia may be heir to the throne, but she longs to be a fierce hunter and warrior. Alone in a frozen world, so it'd be perfect for coldness too. Tali's queendom is at the mercy of the dragons who killed her father, and she is certain it's only a matter of time before they come back to destroy what's left of her family. When the dragons rise and seize Tali's mother, she will do anything to save her, even trust a young dragon who may be the only key to the queen's release. With her sister and her best friend at her side, Tali makes the treacherous journey across the vast ice barrens to Dragon Mountain, where long-held secrets await. Bear cats are on their trail, and dragons stalk them, but the greatest danger might be a mystery buried in Tali's past. So I'm a little traumatized from one middle grade book where I read where the dragon was killed at the end. So once I figure out the dragon's name, that helps her, the young dragon, I might skip just to make sure he's okay. Because I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> get attached and then they get killed. But hopefully that was a one time thing and this dragon will be fine. Very excited for this. It sounds amazing. And I have Amari and Hamza. I think I'm saying that right. The War to, the war to Save the Worlds by Samurai. Ahmed. I think I'm saying that right. On the day of a rare super blood moon eclipse, 12 year old Emma and her little brother Hamza can't stop their bickering while attending an exhibit on medieval Islamic astronomy. When on board Hamza wanders off, stumbling across the mesmerizing and forbidden box of the moon, Emma can only watch in horror as a defunct box springs to life, setting off a series of events that could shatter their world, literally. Suddenly, day turns to night. Everyone around Emma and Hamza falls under a sleep spell, and a, clunk, and a chunk of the moon breaks off, hurtling toward them at lightning speed as they come face to face with two other worldly creatures, Jinn. The Jinn reveal that the siblings have a role to play in an ancient prophecy. Together, they must journey to the mystical land of Quaff, battle a great evil, and end a civil war to prevent the moon, the stopper between realms, from breaking apart and unleashing terrifying Jinn, devs, and ghouls in, onto the earth. Or they might have to say goodbye to their parents and life as they know it forever. That sounds so good. So excited. And I have Kiki Kalira Breaks a Kingdom by Sangu Mandana. I think that's how you say it. And I saw the sequel when I was searching online. I saw the sequel in one of my lists I was looking at. And it already has a cover. So I decided to go ahead and put this one up further on my should be red list cover is just gorgeous. Kiki Calera has always been a warrior. Did she lock the front door? Is there a terrible reason her mom is late? Recently her anxiety has been getting out of control, but one thing that has always soothed her is drawing. Kiki's sketchbook is full of fanciful doodles of the rich Indian myths and legends her mother has told her over the years. One day Kiki ends up falling into the mystical world of her sketchbook where she discovers her characters have been brought to vivid life. From the awesome band of rebel kids who protect the kingdom to the less awesome evil god bent on total destruction. As the, once, as the one responsible for creating him, Kiki must overcome her fear and anxiety to save both worlds, the real and the imagined, from his wrath. But how can a girl armed with only a pencil defeat something so powerful? So anxiety representation in here I think will be very important and some kids will be able to see themselves in Kiki for that and from other and from other aspects as well. Like I don't think I've read many, if any, books with Indian myths and legends. So very excited to see about, learn more about that and read from that. I always love reading different cultures and learning more about different cultures, period. So that just sounds so incredible. And stories, our drawings coming to life, the worlds you create coming to life. Yes. I don't know if it's Ray or Rhea and Blood of the Nectar. The first in the Chronicles of 
Astranthia series by Payal Doshi. I think that's how you say the knit her name. Such a beautiful cover. It all begins the night. I'm just gonna call her Ray. It all become, begins the night Ray turns 12. After a big fight with her twin brother, Rohan, on their birthday, Ray's life is in the small village of Darjeeling, India, gets turned onto its head. It's four in the morning and Rohan is still nowhere to be found. It hasn't even been a day and Ama acts like Rohan is gone forever. Her grandmother, too, is behaving strangely. I'm willing to give up on her brother, Ray, and her best friend, Leela, meet Mishti Dadi, a wrinkly old fortune teller whose powers of divination set them off on a thrilling and secret quest. In the shade of night, they portal to an otherworldly realm to travel to Astranthia, a land full of magic and whimsy. There, with the help of the Ranther and Astranthian Barrel Boy and Fula, a Perry, Ray battles serpent lilies and blood sucking banshees, encounters a butterfly faced woman and blue lizard men, and learns that Rohan has been captured. Ray also discovers that she is a princess with magic, only she has no idea how to use it. Struggling with the truth her Alma has kept hidden from her, Ray must solve clues that lead to Rohan, find a way to rescue him, and save Astranthia from a potentially deadly fate. But the clock is ticking. Can she rescue Rohan, save Astranthia, and live to see it all? India, India's story, so <laughs> that's great. So I'm excited to, again, read more. Like This just sounds incredible. Sounds like a race the clock adventure, so can't wait. And then our Rick Riordan Presents novel by Lori M. Lee, Pahua and the Soul Stealer. I, I love it when they're soft like velvet. I don't know how to explain it, but I just love it when they seem to feel like that. Pahua Moa, I think I Sarah listening, has a bit of a reputation for being a weirdo. A lonely 11 year old long girl with the unique ability to see spirits, she spends her summer days babysitting her little brother and playing with her best friend, a cat spirit no one else can see. One day, Pahua accidentally untethers an angry spirit from the haunted bridge in her neighborhood. Whoops! When her big brother suddenly falls sick and can't be awakened, Pahua fears that the bridge spirit has stolen his soul. She returns to the scene of the crime with her aunt's old shaman tools, hoping to confront the spirit and demand her brother's return. Instead, instead she summons a demon. Thankfully, a shaman warrior with a bit of an attitude problem shows up at the last minute to save her butt. With the help of this guide, Pahua will have to find her way through the spirit worlds and rescue her brother's soul before it's too late. Little does Pahua know she'll have her own discoveries to make along the way. That sounds incredible. You know, this seems like it's about, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but Hmong culture, it's spelled H-M-O-N-G, and they're traditional stories, so I'm very excited to learn and learn more about a different culture, so very excited. And every book I've read by Rick Ryorgan Presents has been great. I haven't read that many, but I have so many, so very excited to read another one. And then the series is called The Powers, and this is Haven Secret by Melin Melissa Benoit and Jessica Benoit, I think I say it, with Mariko Tamaki. And fun fact, I grew up watching wrestling, not WWF or WWE, which is just a bunch of, I really don't like that, but I grew up on WCW before WWE. I always call it F because that's what it was growing up, WWF. I bought it. And I was watching it since I was like three, me and my brother, and just watched it forever. Sting was my favorite. I was in love with him when I was a little girl. But anyway, there was a wrestler, Chris Benoit, and there, if you want to see a tragic story, look him up. But I think that's how he spelled his name, so that's how, why I think I know how to say it. So, fun fact. Ellie McFadden has intuitive gifts. She can sense what other living things are feeling. She can even talk to animals. Too bad she can't connect with her twin sister, Parker. Parker McFadden has kinetic gifts. She can cause shocks to the earth and produce heat energy that explodes from her body like fire, especially when she is angry. The sisters aren't aware of the legacy they inherited from their mother until, on their 12th birthday, two mysterious relatives on the power side whisked them off to an isolated sanctuary called Haven. Ed Ellie immediately adapts to their new routine, but Parker has one impulse, to get back to her normal life with friends and sports fast. Unlocking Haven's secrets is just the beginning of what Ellie and Parker can do if they choose to work together to harness their abilities. But the sinister force that took their mother has other plans, and if the sisters' fragile relationship succumbs to the danger, a terrible fate may befall the people they love. This just sounds so good, and I love a good sister story, so I'm very excited. We have The Wolf's Curse by Jessica Vitalis. I just say wolf and I'm there. I think I've said this 20,000 times, but wolves are my favorite animals. The wolf is not bound by the same rules as you are. 
The great wife wolf is very, very old, and she is very, very tired. For hundreds of winters, she has searched for someone to take her place, but she is invisible to most people. In all those years, only three have seen her. One died young, one said no. One is still alive, a 12-year-old boy named Gaj. Everyone in the village thinks Gaj is a witch. He's been in hiding half his life, all because he once saw the wolf. And right after that, the Lord's mayor's wife died. Now his only protector, his beloved grandpapa, is dead too. The wolf visits the boy again, this time with an offer. She can save him the pain of growing up. Now that he's all alone in the world, it may be the only way to escape the bounty on his head. If only his grandpapa's last words hadn't been, stay away from the wolf. I love that. It sounds like the wolf will be a good character, not a bad, but as usual, is, is feared. And we should all take a better look at the wolf, because the wolf is more scared of us than we are of them, which I always say, and they're very shy, and they just want to be left alone. And I wish we could leave them alone instead of hurting them. So very excited for this. And then lastly for this possibility for January read is The Troubled Girls of Dragomire Academy by Anne Ursu. I think the book was Breadcrumbs that I read by her and absolutely loved. And then I bought all of her books <laughs> that I still need to read, but this one just sounds so good. If no one notices Mara Lupo, it's likely because of her brother, Luca, and that's because of what everyone knows. Luca is destined to become a sorcerer. The Lupus might be from a small village far from the capital city, but that doesn't matter. Every young boy born in Ioria may possess the rare ability to wield magic, to protect the country from the terrifying force known only as the Dread. For all the hopes the family has for Luca, no one has any for Maria, who can never seem to do anything right. But even so, no one is prepared for the day that the sorcerers finally arrive to test Lu Luca for magical ability and... Mara makes a terrible mistake, nor the day after when Lupus receives a letter from a place called Dragon Mara Academy, a mysterious school for wayward young girls, girls like Mara. Soon she is 100 miles from home in a strange and unfamiliar place surrounded by girls she's never met. Dragon Mara Academy promises her and her classmates a chance to make something of themselves in service to one of the country's powerful sorcerers, but as they learn how to fit in to a world with no place for them, they begin to discover things about the magic the men of their country wield as well as the dread itself, things that threaten their precarious balance upon which their country is built. Love a good school story. <laughs> and wayward children and then girls treated differently, but then rising up to kick some butt. <laughs> That's what this sounds like, so I'm very excited. Sounds like it's going to be a great story. Alright y'all, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have you read any of these? If you like, Did you like them? Did you not? Let me know in the comments. And, or if you see any that you want to read now, let me know. Today's shirt's Madonna, Rolling Stone cover. Love Madonna since I was little. When my mom would not let me buy her cassette tapes. Wow, cassette tapes. My mom hated Madonna. <laughs> but I got them anyway. So if you would like to subscribe, I would love that. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.